All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of q and I'm Evan from River's Edge Cutlery, and we got... Mike from River's Edge Cutlery. Fantastic. So we asked you guys questions, or asked, to, asked you guys to ask us questions on our Instagram last week, and now we're going to go ahead and answer them. Mm -hmm. So if you could only buy a knife from one manufacturer for the rest of your life, who would it be? You know, it's, it's the knife that we don't get too many of, but I've carried a Freeman folder around for a while. I really liked it. It was bigger than I normally like, but if it was only one that I could have, that Freeman folder, I know I could do anything I needed. And I always look at in a survival situation, you know, what's the knife I need if I had to be in a survival situation. Um, <clears throat> that folder was really strong as a button lock. Um, I've used it for many different things, including batoning. So to me, that's, I think that'd be my all around knife. Um, yeah, that'd be it. Cool. I, I was going back on our Instagram the other day because I was trying to find a picture for the newsletter and I saw the video of you talking about that Freeman button yeah, lock and I you like were it. like, I know I shouldn't baton with it, but I did <laughs> <laughs> and, and it worked. So I put it through its paces. Um, I think for me, it would probably be something from Chris Reeve, probably an Umnumzon. I just feel like that's the kind of knife that for my purposes, I'm not out in the woods as much as I probably should be, but for my purposes, I feel like I can do literally anything with. Really, really like that knife. Okay, so y'all gonna do more of the Para 3 and the PM2 in the avocado colorway? Well, yeah. Um, PM2s, you know, we've got a bunch of them on order. The Para 3s, um, for those of, that, of you that know and don't or don't know, uh, we did it, you know, of course in the 204P, but because of all the issues and complications with that knife, so few of them out there, we're not gonna do it in the 204P anymore but we will do it in the 20 CV, which is a very similar steel yeah. that could still take that color of PVD. And when the next time the Para 3 comes out in our colors, it's gonna be 20 CV, 20 CV instead of the 204P. So yes, we will have them again. And the PM2s will still be in 204P? Yeah, everything else will be. Cool. Yep. <clears throat> Why do I want so many knives? That's EDC Knife Westland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a personal question that yeah. you must ask yourself. Um, I go through phases where I just want every single knife and then phases where I'm content with my collection. Well, it's tough you. because in our field, we, we handle so many knives. Yeah. And it's like, I want that one. And in the back of your mind, you know that there's just going to be one tomorrow and the next day, the next day that you really want. Yep. You got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, and uh, I, I find that it, it sometimes works both ways. Sometimes being in front of all these knives makes me want all the knives, and sometimes I get to play with it and exper experiment with it, and then I don't need to buy it because I got to actually handle it. So yeah. I, I get that little bit of an upside so I don't have to order it online and just to see if I like the way it feels in hand. You yeah, know? absolutely. So, yep. there's, a, there's a part of that too, but EDC Knife Westland, why do you want so many knives? That's a question you need to ask yourself. <laughs> So, for favorite Civivi knife, I'm going to answer this one because I feel very strongly about this. I think the Civivi Keen Nader, it's a weird name, it's named after a snake, I guess, but I think that knife is completely underrated. It is super smooth, um, different handle materials. I love that knife. I think that's the, the best Civivi knife out there. <laughs> Sam S. Daniels just says, will you respond to this? Yes. Yeah, we respond to anything. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the, thanks for the question. <clears throat> Um, Darth X Vega, I think he thinks we're a much more legitimate YouTube channel than we are because he says, how has being a YouTuber changed your day, uh, your, your day to day life? Um, it takes up more of your time. It takes up, yeah, it's more time. <laughs> we, we do get recognized periodically in the store, but it's, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I get to spend more time with Riley and Everett, which is always a good time. <laughs> Surly, Riley, Surly Everett. All right. Um, what is your favorite comfort food? Ooh. Um, I, pizza for me is just an all around anything food. I just love pizza. Yep. So that's, uh, that's where I'll go. I'm going to go off the beaten path. Indian food when done right. Really? I, yeah. Indian food is just so comforting when it's not too wow. spicy. I love that. Interesting. Mike, have you ever <laughs> considered opening another store or a franchise in another state? Considering it? Yes. Always considering expansion and growth as much as possible. Reality is. I don't know if it'll ever happen. Just logistically, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, franchising, I have not looked into uh, because there's so much involved with franchising, uh, legally, um, getting all that together. Opening up another store though, again, it's always in my mind, but I don't know if I could logistically do that. Uh, we've got a really good team out here. We've got a lot going on out here. I think, I think we're pretty content right now for just being here. Um, franchising, if anybody's interested, hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> You know where to find us. Yeah. When the 80-20 is coming. 
<laughs> from Steven for Perez. Um, they're always on back order. I know John and Andrew are working really hard to get some more of those out there to you guys. I don't think anyone predicted them being as successful or as popular as they were, um, and rightly so. I mean, they're amazing knives, U.S. made. Uh, so we do have a lot more on order. We also have a lot more um, 80-20.5s, specifically in different colors of FRN, on order. Uh, so check back with us probably close to the end of the year, and we'll have more Demcos for you. Will we ever see a Yojimbo rec exclusive? I think that would look really cool. Yeah, I that's really do. super badass. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. You know, it's something, you know, Spyderco is tough to work with right now with uh, exclusives. You know, if we say, hey, that's a cool model, let's do it, let's do X amount. You're talking two years plus oh, yeah. just till you see it. And yep. uh, then everyone says, well, you should order more, you, you know, should do this and that. It's tough, but uh, I do think that would be a really cool model, and I wouldn't mind doing a Yojimbo. Absolutely. A Yojimbo, yeah. Yeah, I think people um, always get kind of dogged on for quantities they order, but um, just, talking to you, just talking to you guys, when those original Spyderco's exclusives got contracted up, we weren't the way we are now, right. you know? Like, the website wasn't where it was at. There was no YouTube, yeah. no social mm -hmm. presence, so... As things get bigger, you know, the, the exclusives have to respond to that, but that takes time, so. It does, and you, you have to forecast, and yes. you know, now we're a little bit better at it than we were, and you know, back two, three, four years ago, you know, we didn't know how many to order, so we'd order the minimum, whatever they would let us order. Yep. You know, if we could do 600, we'll do 600, but now, of course, things are different, so definitely ramping up. But we do want to get a REC Spyderco exclusive in every one of your guys' pockets, so sure. believe that. <laughs> What are some of the best EDC pens? I mean, I love Tactile Turn. I love Tough Riders. Yeah. The US made stuff is, is really, really good nowadays. Um, how about you? Yeah, the pens are really not my forte. You know, I kind of leave that up to you guys. Um, the nerds. <laughs> well, just, you know, I've got, you know, my Fisher Space pen or my uh, Tough Rider. And between those two, I think I've got all my pen bases covered. Um, but yeah, I know there's a bunch of good stuff out there as far yep. as pens go now. So, um, but yeah, I just know Tough Rider is what I have in my pocket usually, so, yeah. Perfect. Something Obscene mm. Company said, yep. what's in the pockets? Huh. Ugh, for me, REC Exclusive Shaman with the um, micro lanyard from EDC Microcord. Oh, yeah. uh, shout out to, cool. yeah. to them, they're awesome. Yep. How about you, Mike, what you oh, got? Oh boy. I got barely anything else. Yeah. Um, American blade work. It seems like I, this is in my pocket a lot lately. Yeah. Um, again, another knife we don't carry trying to <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> they do make nice stuff though. <laughs> yeah. Zach stuff asks, do you lightly sand or polish your washers? Personally? No. Um, but I have yep. in the, uh, custom shop when I was putting some together, uh, experimenting and stuff like that. So I have done it before and I've seen a little bit of a difference. I mean, it does make a little little difference there. It definitely um, does. Yeah. Oh, actually, I don't know if you heard this story yet, but one of your friends from CrossFit brought in a Spyderco Caribbean. Really? And yes, and he had he said that he it was his snow knife. I guess he does metal work with metal. Um, it was his snow knife for when he was out there, and he had left it under a bag of lye or another oxidizing agent. Jeez, so it was yeah. really it, you couldn't open it. Wow. So Everett took it apart scotch brighted it, did yeah. all this, that, and the other. But the, I think the thing that made a huge difference on it was that even the washers had corrosion on them mm -hmm. from the blade. Um, so we took those out and stropped them and, and polished them. And yeah. I mean, obviously in that situation, it makes a big difference. Sure. Okay, let's see. Dub Chi Chi or Shy Shy, depending <laughs> on where you're from. Smock or Shaman? Help me pick my next knife. My personal one's a Shaman. Sam. Um, even though I do like the smock a lot, but uh, just something about the ergos on the shaman that I I just like. Yeah, yeah. And we're big Kevin Smock fans. Oh, absolutely. But uh, I'm I'm also going with the shaman. Yeah. And another one from a uh, dub chi 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 shy shy. How do you feel about the secondary market, Facebook, Reddit, and how prevalent are fakes? Two questions, I guess. I guess, yeah. <clears throat> um, secondary market, it's. You know, something that we try to battle just because if yeah. you guys want the knives, we try to get them in your hands at normal prices. Um, you know, I get the secondary market. I think there's a need for it because if you're willing to pay, you know, two or three times the amount that knife was when it's new, but you just want it, it the secondary market is useful in that 
sense that you rather the knife than the money. So nothing wrong with it there, but again, our goal is to get them the knives out to you guys at the normal cost. Absolutely. So that's what we work hard to do, but um, it doesn't always work out. As far as fakes go, I don't think they're super common in kind of our community. Right. Um, I've seen a couple of them. Um, our friend Phil, he purposely bought, knowing it was yeah. a fake, um, he purposely bought like an orange PM2 um, off of whatever Chinese website it was, and it, just so he could experience what it actually was like, and there was no way that you would get it confused with being a real mm. PM2. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've seen mm. other things online where people have some really good looking fakes. So sure. it's definitely something to watch out for. If you're looking for a knife, always the safest thing to do is go through an authorized dealer, um, because then you never have to worry about it right. uh, but Absolutely. I think probably out there maybe periphery or outside the knife community it's probably a lot more common uh, since people don't know exactly what to look for which is yeah. a bummer because everyone should have you know real knives when is the, an Endura exclusive coming that one's not even in the that's not contract even that's phase. not in the works no <laughs> it isn't um, I think it'd be pretty cool but um, the I think for us it's the PVD coating on a Japanese knife that may not happen sure and that's what i'm not too sure about right now they don't even do dlc they only do titanium nitride over there yeah so, so it's like they're it'd it's be a, really limited a coding issue for us i think so i don't think it's going to happen but never know maybe a different direction yeah we don't know we can seracote them all <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> can you imagine all right Everett, you got a lot of work to do yeah and that's pretty much it for questions for the day nice so if you guys have any additional questions absolutely leave them down in the comments below. Mike and I will go through and answer those in written form. And we really appreciate all the support we've gotten on the YouTube channel. I know it's been, it's been doing really well and we appreciate all the love you guys give us and all the support. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you.